And there's a the, the mayor of the, the mayor of Philadelphia is a man named Michael Nutter. And when he has a rough day, he'll sometimes say he's a he's he's a wonderful guy and I've got to know him. He's the president of the US Council of Mayors today, Conference of Mayors. He's a a lawyer, he's an African American, he's a, been an inspiring leader for that city. But when he has a tough time, he'll say, Now, if you have a deep need to be loved, do not run for mayor. <laughs> Work in a pet store. <laughs> but then he goes right on without missing a beat to do what I've learned to do, which is to share and to say, uh, Reverend, just as you did, that, you know, we look for blessings. And a blessing is one where we can look at our history as a touchstone, <coughs> as a lodestar, as a talisman almost, for the future and for our present. And I was saying to Alvin after I mistakenly called his brother Ted Alvin, and then, five, and then I realized, and then I was like, oh, they're twin brothers, so it's all right. <laughs> Take him <laughs> permission. I was saying to Alvin that, uh, you know, a celebration of an event like this, which, which has so much to do with our history and where values, where real values were, were taught and where lessons were learned and instruction in a remarkable way that I'm, I'm sure that Dr. Seal is going to share. Uh, it reminded me that as I was growing up, uh, my mother would take us by the one-room school where her mother had taught school. Back in my hometown, southern Kentucky, a little town called Glasgow, and then there was this little hamlet outside of Glasgow, like Cane Town almost, that was called Coral Hill. And that's where the one-room school was standing. And when I was growing up, it was falling down. It had been abandoned, and it was in severe disrepair. And over the years, it, it crumbled. And so being here today, in a sense, is the resurrection of, if I can be a little bit uh, selfish about it, it's a little bit of a resurrection of, your, of someone else's spirit, even though we may not have been here like Mr. Harris and uh, like the Seals and like many of you who may have been in this school and experienced it. But, for us, it's a resurrection of spirit as well. So I'm only supposed to get three minutes, y'all, and I think I've already gone beyond it. I want to, I want to, I want to quickly, I want to thank everyone who participated in this from our city side. Uh, Glenn Brown is our deputy, deputy chief administrative officer. Thank you, Glenn, for standing up. And he's a Lexington native. I often say, well, Glenn is the second highest. Uh, operating role in our city and so sometimes when people ask the mayor for something they'll ask Jim Gray for something and I say to them do what I do when somebody asks the mayor when somebody asks Jim Gray to try to get something done do what I do call Glenn Brown and I appreciate that well Glenn was part of this project along Betty Kerr, and our Office of Historic Preservation. So if y'all just hold with me a minute because I want to acknowledge the, the extraordinary work and I hope maybe there'll be a chance for Betty to share because she shared with me some of the passion that went into this project by the contractor who is a preservationist himself and he and his wife would travel here and stay four days a week with their children as he would work on this building. And to this is what, you know, in the, in the world of preservation, I call it a, a true preservation. Because even, all the materials, even the paint in the room, inside and outside, was done carefully. And there was careful thought and planning and research went into it to, to ensure that it has been, has been done authentically to represent what is unique and original and special about place. And finally, I'll just say, uh, I see Bill Wilson, in, in, he's, he's, he's holding, holding up the front from the rear there, but Bill, I'll, I, I, I love Bill's, uh, his wisdom often he'll give, and I'm not going to quote him today, I've got in my little Blackberry, though, I've got Bill Wilsonisms. And, 
But there's another fellow that I that I met about uh, more than 20 years ago. I had the chance to be a trustee at Berea College, where I learned a lot. And uh, and as I was entering, when I was pretty young, I was only 32, and I was entering as a trustee at Berea. There was a man named Alex Haley, that extraordinary author of Roots, who was who was exiting as a as a trustee at Berea College. And in fact, he passed away just a year after that. And he would say, he would, he would say often, in praise of others, which is what I would share with you all today, because what we are praising, I think, here is more than individuals, but it's community. It's history. It's what has been shared over generations. And it's wonderful to see young people here today, as well as those of us more senior. And Alex would say, find what is good in people and praise it. And then he would pause and he'd say, because they will do more of what is praised. And there's a lot to that as I thought as I was coming out here today. So Alvin and others, uh, thank you all for giving me the chance to visit with today, with everyone today, and on behalf of the city, to uh, to <laughs> welcome and to thank you for this sense of community and resurrection that is represented here. And Alvin gave me permission earlier to say that in the in the job of in the job of mayor, we sometimes get pulled around from one event, especially on Saturdays, from one event to another like a little, almost like a rag doll. And so I want to sit in the back of the room for it just as long as I can and enjoy some of this history that's being shared today. But thank you all so much. Thank you so much. Thank you all for once again having me today. And allowing the opportunity to be in front of Hayden Town neighborhood and community and everyone that has always been a part of this community. I know the last time I had the opportunity to address the community, Mr. Seals will remember we put sewer lines through your neighborhood. If you ever want to get to know a community, try digging up someone's front yard and putting in a sewer line. Uh, a lot goes into that and there was a lot of cooperation from the neighborhood and you got a chance to really know uh, what made this neighborhood tick and it holds a special value to me and my heart being born and raised here in Lexington on the north end, right to the Bryan Station. I came by this property many, many times, many times, and I always wondered, what was that property, you know, what happened there, what about that property, because back then, it was run down, as Mr. Seals alluded to earlier, there were some things going on here that, that shouldn't be going on here, and I always wondered, what could, what was that property, what could it be, and today, really brings home that message of what it used to be to me, because if you think back, and think about, Booker T. Washington had a dream with Julius Rosenwald build schools across the south of the United States, 3,500 of them. Think about that, $500 from one of America's top CEOs of Sears and Roebuck, a Fortune 500 company, went against the grain of society and said, I want to build a school. I want to build not just one school, but 3,500. And it was an amazing accomplishment to be able to do that back in the 1920s. And here it is today, 90 years later, and we're sitting in this room today honoring what took place then. That was so symbolic of the message that we need to start giving to our youth once again today, because I think we've lost it, about education. The importance of education, not just for one race, but for everybody. And the value of that education as we grow up, to read, to write, to communicate, to add and subtract. That is power. Having that education and that message they sent back in 1920 to all of our communities. The city of Lexington back then put in $2,500. Mr. Rosalind. Uh, well, Phil put in 500 and then the community put in 300 $3,300 built this building. $3,300 built this building. And Mr. Seals alluded to how much it cost to restore it. But put the value on that. The value of the educational symbolism for our community. The second thing it values, I know Mayor Gray alluded to this as well, and, and, and he's probably been the most outspoken mayor we've ever had in terms of public and private partnerships. Economic development. That's what this building was. It was an example of public and private partnerships working together. And I don't want to put Reverend Slater on the spot, but we have another opportunity in this very neighborhood 
one day maybe build a, a youth center, a community center, to, to, for the kids along Liberty Road Corridor, the Woodhill Corridor, to meet right here in the heart of this, to learn about this building, but also come together for fellowship and, and activities that are positive in their life and education. So we'll put that as number three opportunity on that list, uh, Reverend Slater, and maybe one day we can work on that together if I'm lucky enough to be around. But I want to thank the Kentucky Heritage Council, uh, Betty Kerr, you do a wonderful job for historic preservation. Mary Gray for continuing to support this uh, endeavor uh, and for being here today. I know your time is valuable and very busy. And then, of course, Mr. Shields, not only has he been a leader in this community, but I met him at Brown Station High School dedication when I first got elected. Um, and he was a leader for Brown Station High School and for all of the North End education throughout the whole city. So thank you, Mr. Shields, for inviting me today. And thank you for everyone. It really is an honor, and I mean that, because coming by here daily, back when I was a youth, and now seeing the transformation of this property, and when the government finally purchased it, the LFUCG back in 2003, it really means a lot to see the renovation and to see today come forward. So thank you all for having me. I appreciate it. Our other special guests have not arrived. I didn't think I can see everybody. Let me go to the recognition of additional guests who will not, except one, have the privilege to uh, talk. And because Mrs. Kerr has worked with us for years, and we have time, I want her to come up as the mayor did identify that fact. She is with Historic Preservation, and I'll get Jesse after her. But would you come and make comments? Thank you, Mr. Seals, and everybody here. It has really been a special, special thing for us in historic preservation at the city and, and others uh, interested in preservation throughout our community. To have a community such as your all's, you all have such heart in your community. And it's not because you have fond memories of the past only. You have those which are magic. But you also had great heart about your community today. And so that alone was such a, a binding element of this project coming along. And it was a long time in coming. There's no question of that. And it had its challenges uh, to even survive to the point that it was possible to have the renovation occur, uh, some of which Mr. Seals referenced. Uh, in its evolution. But, you know, this property and specifically this schoolhouse held on and, and you all as a community, I think, protected it by your presence, by your interest in it, by your sharing of your uh, community sense of place. So you kept an eye on it, even when not such good things might be happening, and uh, it survived to get renovated. And being part of the renovation was really a terrific thing for us. And the contractor, uh, what I mentioned to the mayor, um, the contractor was a, a young man from West Virginia who got the bid for the project and he had a degree in historic preservation. And he was, he was, he and his wife, they were the company. And so they would, as the mayor said, come from uh, West Virginia for four days a week. Occasionally they'd stay for a couple of weeks in a run. And they had little, little guys, children, a couple of young children. And they would come out here to talk to them and meet about the project. And uh, the younger of the children was really a little small to be just independent. And so his wife was usually kind of keeping up with him. And he was working away. And the older of the two, you'd see him doing the, the young man starting out to follow dad kind of things of hammering away on some boards and this kind of stuff. And, I love not only that this gentleman cared so much about doing everything properly and with the proper materials and protecting the finishes and, and not over restoring. I mean, if you look, you know, the ceiling isn't perfect. The ceiling is real. This is the real ceiling. There's, you know, there wasn't this, oh, well, we need everything to just have perfect lines and perfect no credits and this kind of thing. I think that is one of the things that's so important about this project. It is all the real building. And it is the building that some of you went to school in. Um, 
And so, but this gentleman, the contractor's commitment went way past your typical somebody hired to do a job. And he just came to a great love for it.